Good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good evening to uh, to all participants and to the presenters to this uh, very important uh, FAO Inputs webinar on food quality of food composition data. I'm very much looking forward to uh, interesting uh, presentations that we will have today on the different aspects of uh, food quality, not only from our uh, food composition uh, perspective, but also from the user perspective. And as you can imagine, food, uh, uh, the quality of the data is very important, not only for the food composition tables, but also for the users. So uh, I'm looking very much forward to uh, the presentation. So I will present uh, the PAO Inputs Evaluation Framework um, Prapasi uh, uh, Puvastin and Kunjit uh, Yukbranson will uh, uh, present the Asian system for quality evaluation of a food composition table uh, and databases. Marine Oser uh, Dux will uh, present the uh, Eurofear quality index for uh, analytical data. And Sandra Crispin will say us from the user perspective, how are quality in food composition used and what is missing? So uh, with this one, uh, I will uh, say that uh, all the participants, uh, they can participate uh, not by speaking, but uh, there you have two buttons. Uh, one is the Q&A and one is chat. So you can put your comments and um, questions into these two chats. And uh, at the end, we will have half an hour where we will be able to, uh, to respond all to your questions. Having said so, I would like to start with the um, presentation of uh, the uh, inputs um, power inputs evaluation framework to assess the quality of food composition tables and databases, uh, which we call uh, very shortly the evaluation framework. And uh, it is a product from many different people. So from, uh, from me, from uh, Barbara Stadelmeier, Fernanda Grande, Anna Vincent, Marin, who is here, Suba Papasi, who is also here, Kunchit, who is here, uh, David Heiderwitz, and Patricia uh, Knalniarella. So what is the background? We know that evaluation systems are very important to systematically assess the quality of the data and or the product to make decisions of inclusions or exclusions for usage. Um, for food composition, we already have some evaluation frameworks available, but they are on analytical data and they are from the USDA and from Europe. But we don't, we did not have one which is uh, global for the uh, published uh, food composition tables and databases. And as we all know, food composition is really the basis for almost everything that uh, we do in nutrition and uh, increasingly also in agriculture. So if this basis is of a bad quality, everything else with it, which is built on it will be of a bad quality as well. Or on the contrary, if it is a good quality, then uh, we have better chances that everything else is on a, on a good quality as well. So what was the aim? We wanted to develop uh, this evaluation framework that will assist um, compilers as well as users to assess the quality of a food composition table in a standardized method. And this is very important. So um, that everybody is using the same framework to uh, determine what is of good and what is of uh, uh, less good quality. And this will help the users to select the most appropriate food composition table that they have. And to demonstrate, uh, and now for the compilers, to demonstrate areas where they could do some improvements. And we hope by this one as well that uh, to motivate decision makers in uh, making better decisions uh, on the investment of uh, in high quality of food composition tables and databases. So the main target groups are the compilers and the users. 
How did we do that? We started in December 2014 with a call uh, through the listserv uh, and we built a working group. Then uh, Barbara Stadelmeier and me, we were then uh, preparing the first draft, which was circulated in, uh, in uh, many rounds. And uh, once we have had the, the more or less the frame, then we started to, uh, uh, to put uh, these uh, themes that we have had into uh, and build up some questions on how we can we evaluate the theme. So, and this took quite some time to, uh, to make a proposition and then fine tune and improve it in several rounds uh, within the working group. And we also tested it to see if what we are proposing makes sense. And then it was really finalized the last year, the text and the Excel file. And at that stage, I really would like to say also a great thank you to Fernanda Grande who, uh, who added all the macros. To the, uh, to the Excel file. And now I hope that we would have uh, published it already, but it is still in the editing and layout process, process and will be published uh, very soon, but in any case in 2021. So how is it looking like? We have three parts. The first part is uh, uh, the screening questions, which are eight questions. And if uh, you, uh, uh, get through it, then you are invited to do the full evaluation, which is part two. So we have seven categories and in each categories, as I said before, we have a lot of uh, questions uh, to which you can answer and then you get a score. And then uh, at the end of this, ever, uh, this uh, full evaluation, we will have a quality score per category. And this quality score per category is then used to do the final scoring of the whole database, which is in part three. So which are the principles? The principle is that, first of all, we define the, uh, the, the categories. And then with, uh, in all the categories, we created uh, questions and sub-questions. And to each of them, uh, the, uh, the, sub, uh, the criteria and the sub-criteria we scored them if they are highly important, uh, important, medium important, or low. And depending on that one, this category, this criteria got uh, a score, which is an, uh, either 120, 90, 60, or 30. And then all the questions which are normally answered by yes or no or not applicable, or sometimes in rare cases, uh, you needed to say if it is applicable for all the foods in, uh, in uh, your database, or if it is applicable to the archival, the reference or the user, user database. And um, based on these answers and the, um, and, the, uh, and the points which were attributed to them, uh, we calculated a score for each of the categories. And uh, as I said before, um, we, want, we have two main uh, target groups, the compilers and the users. And uh, the users, they cannot assess that much the quality of the, uh, of the data. So these questions would then only be asked to the compilers. And uh, then at the end, as I said, uh, for the entire database, we have then a score uh, to say uh, the quality of the entire uh, food composition database. So here are the uh, eight uh, screening questions. So are foods presented per 100 gram edible portion? Then are the denominators um, and the SI units used? So, uh, and they are mentioned. Um, are the tag names of in foods used? And then we have a list of what we consider a minimum list of, um, of components that should be included in each of the food composition tables. And then uh, are the food and uh, food names and their description well uh, specified. Are certain um, foods covered, not only raw foods, but we also wanted to have foods as consumed. Then the source of, um, of data, are they provided and not for the whole database, but on the food level or the uh, value level. And um, then the format, is it 
a format that is user friendly, meaning it is Excel um, as CV CVS similar or access. And you can see the priority, it's either one or two. And then for this one, you get either uh, 10 or 20 points. The final score in the maximum is 120. And if you have less than 100, meaning that uh, one of the high priority questions or two of the uh, um, less priority questions, you failed, uh, then we consider uh, it is not worthwhile to go into the full evaluation. So the full evaluation, we have seven categories. One is the documentation. The second is the food coverage. Third is the food identification. Four is component uh, and value coverage, as well as the expression. Five is the quality of the data. And this is only for the compilers, because uh, normally uh, the um, uh, users will not be able to know. And then the seventh category is uh, the year of publication and the, uh, the frequency of publication. <clears throat> and here on the uh, right hand side, you can see the number of uh, questions that we have in each of the categories. So it ranges really from only few to uh, quite a number, uh, 66. Uh, this is then for the compiler or 65 for the users. And as I said before, uh, the quality of the data has no question for users, only for the compilers. And then based on the questions uh, and the score uh, which is uh, obtained, then we have a quality which is A, B, C, D, which is either very high, above average, average or below average, depending on the score uh, achieved the percentage of the, of the maximum points. And here are some, um, some, it's one example only. So for example, in the category of um, three was the food identification, um, are scientific names provided? And then it is for all relevant foods for certain on, or not at all. Or is the edible part there is, uh, or, the preparation and processing stage. So, and again, for all, for none or for certain. And depending, you can see that you can get a higher score. And if it is none, then it is zero. And then uh, based on uh, the categories, so we have seven categories. And uh, for each category, the uh, maximum point is four points. So uh, for A, B, C, and D, and uh, based on this one, we have then the overall score for the uh, food composition table, which is then A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, and uh, applying the same kind of scoring. So, and uh, as the maximum score will be different for compilers and uh, users, the points to be achieved are different. And then the interpretation is, so if you arrive above 85, it's a high quality. Uh, the second category is above average, average, and below average. And I would also like to acknowledge people who have contributed at the beginning, but uh, dropped out for certain reasons during the process. So, and they are mentioned here, and I would really like to thank them as well. And the conclusion is that this is the first attempt to evaluate not uh, data, but the whole food composition database uh, from an international perspective and uh, for users as well as for uh, compilers. And we are sure it can be improved in the future. And we hope that uh, this result will be helpful to improve existing and future food composition tables and databases as well as to publish them on the INFOOD website. So, and uh, the next one I would like uh, to ask uh, Kunchit and Papasi to present the one from uh, Asian Food. First of all, greetings again to all from Thailand. I'm Prabhasi Puvasati and, uh, and my colleague from the Institute of Nutrition, Mahidon University. We would like to acknowledge uh, FAO in Foods and Dr. Ruth Sharon here for inviting us to share our experience 
on the development of the ASEAN food system for quality evaluation of public food consumption table and database. Since some of the participants may not be the food consumption database generator, may I first review the step of uh, to establish food composition database in good quality food consumption database. The first step, we have to set the, the objective and then uh, select and prioritize food and nutrient to be analyzed, which can be based on the national food consumption survey and the nutritional problem in each country. Okay, and then uh, prepare sampling plan and collect a representative sample. Then we prepare the sample and uh, we prepare the sample and to be homogenized and then analysis. Uh, after that, uh, we prepare the, uh, we, after the analysis, we should use the standard method uh, and instrument, and we should have quality control system, internal and external. After that, we get the analyzed data, and we prepare archival database, reference database, and user database. You can see that uh, along, the, along the process, we have a uh, the first system, Eurofer and USDA guideline for evaluation data quality of the, the quality of the analyzed data. And we have also the second system, FAO input guideline for checking the data prior to uh, pub publication. We have to check all detail and all information, the data and all information before we publish. And, and now uh, we also need the evaluation system for assessing the quality of the published food composition database. So these are the steps to establishing good quality food composition database. This slide shows the function table which were available in 2015. The oldest version was published in uh, 1997, and the newest one is uh, was published in 2015. We found that different food consumption tables present different detailed information of foods and nutrients with different data quality. Some use different food consumption data format. At this time, some country were in the process of updating the national food composition database. In 2015, you see the uh, International Life Science Institute Southeast ASEAN Asia region survey the status of the National Food Commission table in ASEAN and they provide uh, financial support to organize the first round table ASEAN food EUC discussion on the development of a quality food commission table and database in ASEAN and also uh, the development of an evaluation system for assessing the quality of published National Food Commission table in ASEAN country. Fortunately, at the beginning of the uh, 2015, Dr. Root distributed the first draft of FAO in food evaluation framework and criteria on the quality of the published food commission table and database via the food composition discussion group so we prepare a draft version of ASEAN food evaluation system based on the FAO in food first draft and used for round, round table discussion. The round table discussion led to harmonization and agreement of the idea and the first version of the quality evaluation system was developed and used for evaluation of the old version of national food composition table in ASEAN. After the trial, the final ASEAN food system for quality evaluation was developed in March 2016. It composed a set of 12 criteria with several sub-criteria together with a weighting and scoring systems. The final ASEAN food quality evaluation system will be presented to you now uh, by Dr. Kanchit Jukbasom.
Okay, for the, the developing ASEAN quality assessment of the published food conversion database, the round table discussion is emphasized on the main component of the quality system. They are composed of the criteria, sub criteria, rating score for the criteria, ranking score for the sub criteria, and also the scoring system to indicate the quality of the evaluated food conversion database. The ref, all the reference that we use during the discussion, round table discussion, so starting from the, the framework, as we mentioned several times, and the guideline from the Europe, from the FAO, and also from the Greenfield Southgate book. I think uh, the community of food cooperation, we know about this. The total criteria of the ASEAN food quality system is uh, we decided to have 12 criteria. They are the first in the year of quality evaluation. We also uh, have a concern on the weighting score of each criteria. For the first of the year quality evaluation, we provide only one. The second criteria is the percentage number of food items in the updated version food condition table compared to the previous system. The weighting score is four. The maximum, the maximum score in each criteria is five. So we also uh, discuss a lot on, on the score on each criteria. So this is the consensus from the ASEAN member. The third criteria is the document of the information to the user. And also the score is four. The fourth is the food description, again, four. The fifth percent contribution of the NRI data from the laboratory within the country. We have the maximum score of five. The number six is number of individual data set where in more than or equal more than three for preparation of the user database. The maximum rating score is five. Number seven on the food conversion derived from the compute data or borrow data, including the recipe calculation. The score provided only three. The number eight is cover nutrients, which is very important part of the database. So the consensus is five score. Number nine, missing nutrient data. The score is three. The quality control from the laboratory. This is the part that uh, for the user, we cannot know about the, the laboratory part. So we use the cell assessment by the evaluator. But we emphasize on this the criteria. We also provide the maximum score of five. Number 11 is compilation tool used for the establishing and updating food conversion database. The rating score is four and the access of the food commission table, food commission database, the maximum score is five. So according to the 12 criteria, you can see that the, the maximum score is uh, number five, number six, number eight, and number 10. From this, when we, we, we have each sub criteria, what I will present to you later, but now the, the, when we see the maximum score in this column and in this slide, I want to show you only the major contribution of the uh, East criteria, which is I already uh, put the yellow color in four parts of East criteria. Okay, the, the quality assessment system, we also evaluated by the user using the Excel templates, but I think uh, it is the same of the uh, input framework but we have much easier than, than the, the, the framework. Before we go into detail, may I introduce to you to the weighting score of, for the criteria and ranking score for the criteria. Five is represented as the most important or most compiled with the criteria or sub criteria. And uh, descending order into one, less important, it means it not meet the criteria. And the same as the weighting score for the sub criteria. 
Five is represent of the most compiled with the criteria, and one is not compiled with the criteria. For the first, for the first criteria, we emphasize on the year of publication, and again the rating score only one. The old version of the published, you can see, uh, if we publish really old version, we will got only uh, one for ranking score. But if the full completion survey published very recently, we will got the maximum score five. And the criteria number two, the percentage of number of food item in the updated version. If uh, the database ha has the number of the food item less than 10% of the total, so they will got only one of the ranking score. Whereas when they have more than 50 number of food items that update in the uh, compared to the previous version, they will got uh, maximum score five. In this webinar, we use the Thai Food Convention database as an example for the evaluation. The evaluator in each country will fill only the 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 color in the in the in the column F only. So the score that they give in, they will uh, put into this column, and then the Excel will calculate the total score for each criteria and also for the final score. The criteria number three about the documentation of the information to the user. They also have several sub criteria here, starting from food sampling, sample preparation, and uh, copper nutrient unit of expression. I think all of these information are very important. So we, we will uh, provide the score about four for each sub criteria. The number four about the food description. We divided into three parts of the food description. For the first group, uh, raw and cooked single food. If they provide local name, English name, scientific name, and also part of food, uh, maturity, physical state, cooking method, so they will got the maximum score of four in each sub criteria. And for the homemade dish or food, so in the restaurant or supermarket, they also need to have some sub criteria here. And also the same as for the uh, prepackaged food, they also have some sub criteria. Number five, about the percent contribution of the analyzed data from the laboratory. If the more data that arrive in the library, it means that the data is come from the analyzed data. The maximum score of five will be given, whereas the really uh, low number of the analyzed data, they will have only low uh, ranking score. The number six about the number of individual data set where in more than three uh, for the preparation of user database. And Again, the more of the individual data set, which uh, is mean this is more uh, quality, they will get, uh, they will got the maximum score five. And number seven for the food composition database derived from the compute data or borrow data, which is uh, consists of several sub parameter sub criteria here. So they also have the fulfill in each sub criteria. The major uh, important part is the copper nutrients. We also discussed a lot on the priority of each parameter here, starting from the main nutrients, uh, dietary fiber, sugar, starch, major, uh, major element, trace element, and also, also the water soluble vitamin, uh, fat soluble vitamin, fatty acid cholesterol, and also etc. here. So they also have a lot of sub criteria which we are uh, emphasize based on the nutrition problem in each country and we have the consensus that I think may be different from country to country, but this is the consensus of the ASEAN group member. The criteria number nine is the missing nutrient data in the food commission database. If 
uh, we have less missing data is mean high quality. So this is we will get got the uh, maximum score five. And uh, number 10 is the quality control for the lab analysis. As I mentioned to you that this is part, this criteria we need to use the cell assessment because the user for all the evaluator may not know the, the, the quality in the laboratory. For example, the laboratory already accredited ISO 17025 or not, using standard analytical method or not, using internal quality control or not. So this is the uh, important part for the analysis. The criteria number 11 is the compilation tool used for establishing and updating full information database. As we know that, okay, we have the, uh, for example, in food compilation tool for the, uh, uh, use for the compilation. And we, we also provide some cell developed compilation tool or commercial. You can see the score view, uh, uh, listening order here. The last criteria of the evaluation uh, system is the assessment of the food commission database. We also provide as a pin set, pin thread version. This is have sub criteria only three score. But when we provide in the PDF, the score is going up and in the Excel is the maximum, maximum score. For the searchable, we also uh, make the decision that we will have only four for each score. Okay, all the 12 criteria and sub criteria here, you can see they have a lot of number to be filled in. For the Thailand Food Commission database, we, we, we end up with the 12 criteria with the maximum score is at around 200. And when we put the score for evaluation, and this is example for the Thailand that we got around 90% of quality score. And the same as Luz uh, presented, if we classify as a confidential code uh, as a grade A for the high quality, it means it's maximum uh, uh, more than 85%. So, and this is the same criteria. Okay, the result that we got from the ASEAN member country, sorry that we cannot uh, uh, put the name of each country, but we can, we can see that, okay, in the ASEAN country, we need uh, the improvement for the one that they have Low, low score. And according to the low table discussion, we can see that they have many uh, sub criteria and criteria to be emphasized when you publish the uh, uh, food commission database. Mm -hmm. So I think this is uh, our e example of uh, exercise in this case. So may I move to uh, uh, Dr. Papasi to summarize. These are the current version of food composition uh, table and database in Indonesia, in Malaysia, and in Philippines. And they, they have also the uh, online food composition database. Okay. And this is uh, uh, the current version of food composition table in Thailand. We have uh, two source of uh, two data source. The, uh, in 2016, we developed online uh, version of Thai Provision Database, and in in 2018, the Thai Version Provision Table published in by Ministry of Public Health also uh, developed both database online. And uh, during the quality evaluation results that obtained in 2015 have been considered and used by the ASEAN food member countries in preparation for preparation the update version of the national food composition table and database for improving the quality of the, the new one. So we expect to see uh, much improved uh, quality of the food composition table and uh, database in ASEAN. However, the quality evaluation of the update version have not yet been uh, uh, finished. So uh, it is on process now. So we expect to see the much, uh, much improvement in terms of the quality of the database in ASEAN. That's our, our presentation.
Thank you so much, uh, Kunchit and Prapasi, for this presentation. And you can see that uh, many things are very similar, but uh, very different. Uh, so uh, the, um, the weighting is quite different between the two concepts. So, uh, and uh, to be seen how useful these two concepts in parallel will be. Um, may I remind uh, the participants that you have the possibility to uh, write down in the chat or in the Q&A your questions and, um, and, uh, and comments. Please do so. So may I invite now uh, Marine to uh, present uh, the European Quality Index for Analyzed uh, Data. Um, thank you, Ruth. Um, yes, I'm Marine Ozeretuk from the French Agency for Food, Environmental and Occupational Health and Safety. Um, my presentation will be about the Youth Year Quality Index um, for analytical data. So, Eurofer Quality Index, analytical data, there are some words to clarify um, on this topic. The first word is Eurofer. Um, I will give you an insight of what Eurofia is. The second concept is data quality. Once the meaning of data quality uh, is defined, we will need a method and a tool to measure it. So we need a system. And Eurofia has created such a system, we'll make an overview of it. This system consists of a set of questions grouped under different topics. And the scoring methodology is associated with these questions. It leads, to, it leads to the production of a score which reflects the overall result of the quality assessment. And we call this score the quality index. After presenting this data quality assessment system, um, I will share with you what I've learned from this work. Let's start with information on Eurofer. Eurofer means European Food Information Resource. Um, initially, it was a five-year project funded by the European Commission, and um, its objectives were essentially to strengthen scientific and technological excellence in food data bank system, this for the benefit of European food and nutrition research. To reach these objectives, a European quality framework uh, was built, and then the European quality index was created as part of this framework. Eurofirm now is a network and also a non-profit association uh, of 150 members, mainly um, research institutes, government departments, and uh, universities. Eurofirm participates in various projects from the European Union and from the European Food Safety Agency and gets funding from this. Eurofirm also operates the InFood Regional Data Center in Europe. Um, its current mission uh, remains very close to its initial mission. It still advocates for food information, but in larger geograph geographical area as initially. You can have more information on eurofear.org. The circle here is representing the Eurofear data quality framework. Um, it's indeed covering many different aspects of quality in food composition databases. For example, a flow chart of the compilation process identifying critical control points um, was, was produced. You also have practical recommendation concerning recipe calculation, component identification. Well, even an official standard registered by the European Committee for Standardization was created based on Eurofear work. And so Eurofear worked on quality evaluation of values. The question to be answered is slightly different from the one um, that was presented by Roos and by Kunchit and Prapresi. The question is, is the data to be evaluated appropriate for inclusion in the national food composition database? So data quality is defined this way. Today, today we will focus on the quality of any analytical data for any food and for any nutrients. Which method did we use to produce this uh, Eurofear data quality system? A task group uh, has been set up um, with uh, European members, and we made a review first of existing data, qualities, uh, data quality assessment system. 
We had the BASIS system, which is another UFA work. Um, it's dedicated to bioactive substances in foods. Uh, we have also four national systems from the US, from France, from Italy, and from Germany. The difficulty with data quality assessment is that it's not pure science. I mean, some decisions have to be taken based on compiler experience. Therefore, some national data quality system were never published in scientific literature. And one benefit of being in a project was that we were able to have access to systems from members that were never published and we could be inspired by them. And we tried to make a compromise between all these different systems. The DAS group produced a draft and other European partners have given their inputs on this draft and the system was tested by a compiler. The quality assessment for analytical data we've made consists of seven categories that you can read here. Food description, component identification, sampling plan, number of analytical samples, sample handling, analytical method, and analytical performance. Defining these categories was more or less easy because there was a good consensus between the different systems on these categories. And today we will focus only on two categories, food description and analytical method. Um, in each of these seven categories, we have identified a list of critical issues. Each issue was considered in a question and possible answers to this question were either yes, no, or not applicable. We have this not applicable answer when the question is not relevant for the pair of food and nutrient considered. In the end, the number of questions per category ranges from 2 to 16. And to assess the quality of a value with the UFA system, you have to answer up to 33 questions in total. Here is the list of questions in each category. This is, of course, too small for you to read, but I show it to you so that you can form an opinion on the complexity of the system. You will understand that I won't be able to present all the questions now, and therefore I will focus on, uh, on two categories only. In the food description category, we have indeed three subcategories of questions. The first applies to all types of food, the second applies to manufactured goods, and the last applies to composite dishes made at home or in restaurant, for example. Here on these slides, we have questions rel related to all types of food. You can see that you have already 12 questions there. In each question, the UFA quality assessment system questions the availability of satisfying details concerning specific issues. For example, food group, uh, cooking method, preservation method. The first question is, for example, is the food group noun? This question is asked because if we have a data on mustard, for example, it can be important to know whether we are talking about the seed or about the seasoning. Another question is on the edible parts. If relevant, is it clear if the food was analyzed with or without the inedible part? You can notice in this question that we have the words if relevant. We have it because for some foods, the question is not relevant. Example are salt, juices, and apple sauce. We do not want to ask questions and count a positive answer, I mean a yes, as in favor of good data quality, whereas the answer is obvious. Therefore, we have this uh, not applicable um, answer. It's up to compiler to decide um, whether a question is relevant or not for the given food and nutrient. The UFA data quality assessment gives sometimes advice and examples. Um, for example, we have um, this question in the system. Uh, if relevant, is the month or season of productions indicated? Among the tips accompanying this question, you have that it is especially relevant for fresh foods and vegetables, for example. Well, despite the number of questions in this category, it may be a, a category not too complicated to assess for compiler because they are familiar with all these aspects. They are indeed to be considered when using food description coding system such as Langwall or Foodex2 that compilers know very well. So 
As a preliminary conclusion on this category for assessment, I would say that it includes a high number of questions, but number is not necessarily uh, associated with complexity. Nevertheless, the more questions you have, the more time you spend to perform the assessment. And care was taken to limit as far as possible the number of questions. Indeed, in this category for assessment, complexity lies in decision and relevance of the question for the given couple food and nutrient. So till now we have explored some aspects of the category food description. And since we have a quality assessment system focusing on analytical data, let's focus now on the category analytical method. This category consists of two questions only. Is the analytical method appropriate and are the key method states appropriate? One major input of your field is to provide the support in the assessment of analytical method. This input is the Eurofield guidelines for assessments of method of analysis. It's also named GANA in short. It's freely available on the web. You will find a wiki analytical method for vitamins uh, created originally by Eurofield and supplemented by uh, the project TDS Exposure, which is a, a European project financed by the European Commission. In GAMMA, for each vitamin, you have the current golden standard for analysis, its principle, its key steps. You also have the list of precautions to be taken for sample preparation. Uh, for example, for vitamin B2, um, its high sensitivity to light um, is mentioned together with its uh, sensi sensitivity to alkaline condition. You have also a list of cert certified reference materials and standard reference material in gamma, and the list of proficiency testing schemes. Other methods available are also considered. So with all the information provided in gamma, it's impossible to answer the two questions that you can see above, above. but also questions for other category. Um, the category analytical quality control, um, uh, questions on sample handling. So the creation of GAMA was a very important step forward because compilers assessing data quality have reported during European meetings lacking knowledge regarding analytical techniques. In a sense, um, GAMMA is a foundation supporting ability to answer many questions of the Eurofear Data Quality Assessment System. So after considering two categories of the Eurofear Data Quality Assessment System, I will say a few words on scoring strategies used in this system. Scores per category uh, range from one to five, one corresponding to the lowest quality and five to the highest quality, of course. We have here two examples of different strategies for scoring. The first example is for food description. To determine a score for this category, it was decided to multiply by five the number of yes answers and to divide it by the number of relevant questions. For another category, the category component identification and related terms, the scoring strategy is totally different. This category consists of the three following questions. Is the component described unambiguously? Is the unit unequivocal? Is the matrix unit unequivocal? To score it, um, you have to give the maximum score, which is five, when you have three yes. Any other combination of answers would lead to score one. You'll then understand that scoring is not straightforward and that it's necessary to have an automatic determination of scores based on answers given. Um, this automation was implemented in Foodcase, the food data management system that is promoted by Eurofer. But it could of course be implemented in any other food data management system. Um, Eurofer advises to store not only uh, scores obtained for each category, but also all answers that were given. The idea is not only to keep traceability, but also to allow future checking and uh, maybe updates. Once you have a score per category, you can determine the total score for the data uh, that was assessed simply by summing the seven scores per category. The value obtained is the quality index. It ranges from seven to 35, 
it then can be recalculated to a maximum of 100 to be more easy to handle. After this presentation of the European Quality Index for Analytical Data, I mean only for two categories, um, I would like to share with you some lessons learned thanks to this work. The first one is that making such a system requires to make compromises. If you define too precisely questions, and if you have too many questions, you may have a good robustness, but performing a data quality assessment would be extremely time consuming. On the other hand, if you have excessive simplicity uh, and a very limited number of questions, well, misinterpretation will be possible. We would obtain a quality score, but if its repeatability and reproducibility is very bad, then it would be pointless. Another challenge um, is updates and extension. Today, um, gamma applies only to vitamins. Uh, well, uh, ideally, it should be extended to other nutrients than vitamins. And gamma should also be updated. Um, another kind of update that could be planned is to propose a data quality assessment system for non-analytical data that wasn't done uh, and published till now, or at least not, fin not finalized. A third challenge is to promote the use of this system among compilers. It's indeed rarely used. Uh, we should explore the reasons why. Should we emphasize the importance of data quality assessment? Is the system too time consuming? What are the difficulties encountered by users? It would be an interesting option to collect more feedbacks from compilers by organizing round robin tests, for example. I conclude with the successes obtained from this work. Well, this system is the first attempt to make a common data quality assessment system for analytical data in Europe. Before that, we had different countries having different system, and we also had a majority of countries having no system available at all. The second success is that, uh, well, this system is associated with Gamma, and thanks to it, it was possible to overcome the difficulty of assessing aspects related to laboratory analysis. And to conclude, I will emphasize the benefit of this system that we had not planned. <laughs> In fact, the list of questions uh, we have made is a very useful checklist when designing a food composition study uh, when preparing a report or a scientific paper describing new data. So thanks to IFAO for its invitation to attend this for listening. Thanks also to all contributors of the work presented today. You can see the name of uh, various authors of Eurofia publication on this world cloud. And the Eurofia quality for quality assessment system for analytical data can be found on the Eurofia website. Here is a long link. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Marine, uh, for this uh, presentation. Um, and uh, may I invite Sandra to, to give her perspective uh, from a user perspective, which I think it's very interesting because we as compilers, we are all, always so uh, bringing so much importance to the to the quality of the data that we are presenting, and uh, Sandra will walk us through some of her uh, perspective of how this would be used or is being used. Thanks, Ruth. Uh, I need I need permission to to share my screen. Actually, uh, perhaps Marine needs second. to. Second, yes, I have difficulties to close the window. Um, I'm afraid I should quit and, and be back so as to let you um, so, I, so as to let you present Sandra. Sorry. Um, it's on the on the on the top. It, when you have two screens, it can be on the other screen though. Right? Yes, but uh, I just um, uh, have lost the window, um, the Zoom okay. window. So I'm back. Okay. <laughs> Sorry.
Not yet. <laughs> can, can you, uh, as an administrator, uh, change that? You, yeah, now. I think yes. I've managed. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So let's see. Um, uh, I should do the other screen. Just a second. There we go. This did not happen when we tried. Um, okay. Can you see my screen now? Hello, can you hear me? Because I cannot see you. Everything is perfect. Okay, great. So uh, thanks a lot, Ruth, for the invitation. Uh, it's my pleasure to share this presentation with you this morning for our user perspective, how our quality in food composition you use it and what's missing. I will be talking uh, in reference to the evaluation systems that have been presented, but also I will give a bit of perspective on the quality of food composition data overall use it uh, as a user. Before I proceed with the topic itself, I would like to define who is the user I'm going to be talking about it in this presentation. Uh, as you may know, food composition data attend a variety of purposes, including different user groups. And this may include different backgrounds, such as nutritionists, dietitians, but also economists, journalists, and many other uh, specialists. These groups may have common needs, but also specific needs. We may be interested in estimating nutrient contents of foods, but also for the labeling, nutritional claims, and other purposes. As such, I'd like to define here with you that my view, my user perspective is from nutritionists, dietitians who perform dietary assessment, especially in nutritional surveys. I will also be talking a bit about individual level assessments, but I cannot uh, extrapolate much more than that because this is my experience. I also would like to acknowledge the following with you. Uh, as you may know, dietary assessments or overall assessments on, on diet, uh, they have a step of food matching, linking food consumption with composition data. And this varies from practice to practice, how this is done. And this variation will have implications on data quality. I think this is very important, especially uh, with systems, with softwares or assessments that we will use softwares with predefined matching, pre-incorporated matching between consumption and composition data, because this really often uh, implies less quality of the data. And this is very common at individual level assessment around the world. Other assessments, we do the posterior matching, uh, which allows to improve the data quality it's also more challengeable, but it's common at the populational level in nutritional service. Furthermore, I would like to acknowledge that as a user of uh, food composition data in dietary assessment, very often this food matching, this linkage is not done by food composition tables specialists. And in practice, I rarely see evaluation systems being considered. In terms of evaluation systems, you have seen in this, uh, this morning or afternoon, depending on where you are, uh, evaluation systems uh, that usually are focusing on analytical data. Uh, possibilities exist, but in practice, little is done to recognize the quality of food composition data in the final dietary information for nutritional surveys. There is a long way uh, between identifying the table, the data that you want to use, and reporting the final values. And I'd like to invite you to reflect on this because in fact, I can define in a good table to be used, but in practice, in practice, uh, in dietary assessment, we are mixing food composition tables. And no evaluation systems exist to judge the used, calculated and estimated values. So I would say that there is a gap here and uh, perhaps in foods evaluation system is considering uh, the user perception perspective 
and uh, is taking into account some of these needs. But uh, I also think that before uh, we decide which food composition paper is available and report what's the real number at the end, there is a long way of aspects to be considered. And then uh, I would like just to highlight some fundamental questions that usually we should ask or we ask ourselves while uh, performing these uh, assessments either for the matching option uh, with predefined values already matched or doing after we collect the data, uh, these questions they need to be asked. The difference is that with predefined matching, uh, little can be done actually to improve the quality of the data. And when uh, you are doing this afterwards, uh, you allow yourself to make more conscious choices and uh, more can be done to improve the quality of the data. So usually we will ask ourselves if there is a national representative tape available. And then a question that usually is hard to answer, and perhaps now with the evaluation system will be easier. It is if this tape is of good quality, uh, because it's not so easy to evaluate that. Uh, so we would like then probably to prefer to use uh, one with an evaluation system in place. And another question that I think is important for us as users uh, to ask ourselves if it, the food composition table is of no use. Because sometimes it's not easy to define this is a good table, but it's easy, easier uh, to actually identify uh, bad compilations or bad food composition tables that will not um, add a good quality of the data for us. And here, I just would like to give an example uh, that also I think should uh, could help us identify the needs of users is that in Brazil, as you may know, we have two more than one Brazilian national table. These two, TACO and TBCA, are considered of good quality. Uh, a lot of nutritionists and um, other uh, background state professionals, they do use these two tables, but one is providing data more in the analytical level uh, values uh, and then if I take the example of rice, I have rice type one cooked and that's it. And TBCA is a compilation where we'll consider uh, preparations and uh, rice will have the addition of oil, onion, garlic and salt. And as such, uh, contents of lipid and sodium of course will be higher in the TBCA table. And as a user, I will prefer to use for dietary assessment, the TBCA values. And this is not always understood, it's not always done in the country, uh, but that is something we need to identify uh, in order to, to proceed with the analysis. Another question we would like to ask, considering that more than one food composition table is usually used in our assessment, is if there is an order of reference. And the answer is yes. Uh, and of course, we would you like to go with more quality first and less quality after? This is not always easy to, to, to do it. Uh, perhaps now with evaluation systems in place, uh, we could evaluate that and make um, better choices. I also need to ask myself when using food composition tables uh, for dietary assessment is uh, if I can use how can I use the values from different tables? And a lot of uh, uh, assessments uh, may be using uh, information interchangeably uh, without consideration the need for harmonization and standardization. This is a problem that I usually see in practice and I think we should avoid. We need more um, understanding that nutrient definitions, fortif fortification practices are different from country to country modes of expression, they need to be uh, also standardized. In all other aspects that are highlighted in these evaluation systems you have seen um, presented this morning. I will not talk much about, about that, more about that, uh, but we have the food comp course and the ITVAL in foods uh, platform that, uh, as you may know more than I, than I know, uh, covers very well this topic. And the last question I think we should ask ourselves or 
maybe not the last one, but an important one to be asked is, uh, depending of the nutrient of the interest, well, how is the coverage of the table I'm mean, working with? Uh, do I have missing values? Uh, should I borrow and is, um, or estimate it a nutrient values for all foods? This is a, a task that can be done and uh, should be reported more often. Here, I bring you the example of a um, Caribbean survey we are performing at the moment. This is preliminary and uh, preliminary report, but uh, so far from the foods we have been uh, assessing, uh, most of the foods, most of the nutrients, they have a good coverage above 90-80% of uh, the nutrients or the dietary components. And there are components such as diet, um, carotenoids, uh, which will not have a good cover and therefore values will be underestimated and this will have implication in the quality of the data. Um, here's a bit... Um, cut it, but uh, because I was asked to talk about uh, how data quality is used, I also would like to stress that although we don't have uh, evaluation systems in place to assess uh, what we are using, there are some guidelines uh, specifically from StrubNut released in 2016, which guide us, which give us some guidance on what we should minimally report when presenting our survey results. Specifically related to food composition data, we have four guidances. The first one is a very interesting one, which uh, suggests us to describe and justify food composition data used, explain the procedure to match food composition with consumption data, and describe the use of conversion factors. Even uh, mention uh, that we should uh, also have clear the number of missing values in food composition and how these were treated. There are three other guidances. Uh, one, to describe any statistical method used to combine dietary or nutritional data, if applicable. This is one I find very interesting and important that limitations in food composition data should be described as well. Uh, as you may may be aware, most of the dietary assessments uh, that use food composition data that report nutrient intakes do not report much on the food composition data used. We barely see the name of the food composition table used and more can be said about the whole exercise in order to give us some uh, more understanding of the quality of the data. And last, they also suggest to provide data collection tools and data as online material, and this would be the case for the food composition data itself. So going toward the end of my presentation, um, I also would like to mention two complex aspects that I think we should consider in, in the assessment of the data quality, as far as we are combining data from consumption and composition. Uh, diverse descriptor systems are used between the service, and this can hamper the nutrient values achieved in dietary assessments. You have seen that all evaluation systems presented this morning, they had some evaluations on food description. And while we can guarantee that from the composition part, we cannot um, guarantee that from the consumption part. We have a lot of reporting that will come in a very simplistic way. Uh, I have seen people only reporting, for instance, fish without mode of preparation, uh, but you also should have the type of the fish. You can also give a more explanation on how it was cooked, if it was fried, and what type of oil was you used, what type of fat. And uh, this kind of differences in food description uh, certainly will imply um, different quality of data. And then just to reflect on, uh, if a bad value is presented, will this be due to the composition or to the lack of information provided? And another aspect is the rest disaggregation dilemma. Food nutrient values can be hampered by the lack of these details. If more recipes preparations are needed after the survey, how can you guarantee the data quality? If I, as a user, need to do more recipes because this was reported in my survey. Uh, how can I guarantee that this was done as the other 
uh, food composition tables did. I think we need uh, guidelines for that. We also need cooperation with compilers. And there is also the need for compilators to share what's used behind the calculations. And to finalize, reflecting on what's missing, I think that is, uh, it is missing transparency on used procedures in food matching, especially from pre-existing matching to enable us to assess the data quality. I also think we need more transparency on the reporting of the food composition data used in the assessments and the need for evaluation system to assess final nutrient values in nutritional surveys. Because I believe there is a long way before before you define the table or when you define the table to find a reported values with complex aspects to be considered uh, that we will not guarantee the quality of the data at the end if you do not consider that. Thank you very much. Well, Thank you so much. Uh, I would really like to uh, thank all the presenters. Uh, they have done uh, a tremendously good job in presenting what we as compiler think and uh, how we assess the quality either of the analytical data of the whole uh, database. And then from the user perspective of how this is used. And, uh, and probably, yes. We need to go further, but this is then probably not for the food composition community to do, but it is more for other communities to do, like the dietary assessment community. So, uh, and um, so, really, thanks to all the presenters, and I also would like to uh, thank uh, Sol Ruiz, uh, who is our IT specialist and who is making this webinar uh, possible. So, thanks a lot to her as well. And uh, I would like uh, now to go to the part of the question and answers. So we have some uh, uh, questions. Uh, the first one is uh, from the Asian Quality Assessment. Is it publicly available and where? You are unmute, uh, you have to unmute, Kunti. Okay, at now at present we uh, need not put into the online system, but if the one that need to have the, the template so we can send to, to directly to the mail. And in the future, I think we encourage to, to use the info FAO framework rather than the ASEAN system. So um, also another question for Kunshit and uh, Papasi. Um, you presented there were some Asian food composition tables which did not score that well. Where would they need improvements? Okay. According to the, uh, the, the, the score, that the food composition table that has low score, we found that the number of samples to be analyzed is one of the, of the important factors. Low, low score. And, and also the copper nutrients also give the low score and the food description okay and the percent of analyzed data if it is less uh, the, it, they will get low score and also the document to the user lacking of document to the user and detailed information of food com composition database so these are the causes of the low score the uh, low score of quality score. So if you can, uh, if you consider improve uh, those uh, cost factor, the score will be increased. Okay, and, and I think if you look at the criteria for evaluation, you can find a way mm -hmm. uh, to increase uh, quality in your food composition table or database. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Conchit and Papasi. Um, there was a question if it is possible to join the evaluation process in, uh, in Israel. And I think the evaluation frameworks, they are done. 
So you can use them to improve your own food composition table in any country. So it is done in a way that it is universally applicable. If it is the uh, analytical data uh, evaluation or if it is uh, the evaluation of the whole food composition table. So, but these processes are for the moment, they are closed and they are, well, the Eurofear one is published and the, the other ones are going to be published. Then there is a question to uh, Marine, uh, where to find gamma? Is it published? So if it is published, can you in the chat uh, probably put uh, the link? Yes, I'm doing it right now. So you'd have the answer. Yes, and then there is another question. Uh, what is the difference between Eurofear and the input guidelines? Probably, Marin, you would like to, um, yes. to answer that one as well. Okay, um, the Eurofear guidelines um, are at the level of a unique uh, analytical value, where the FAO guidelines, uh, I mean the, the FAO quality framework presented by Ruth, is at the level of a food composition database as a whole. So it's a very different level. Uh, one is very close to the data, the other one is uh, at a higher level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it is very different. So, you know, if a food has, uh, has um, let's say, 30 uh, nutrients, you have to do this evaluation for each of the 30 va values of this one food, and then you go to the next one. And this is why it is uh, so, uh, so extensive. And then uh, there was another question. So um, the Oriflame system uh, is interesting, but it is very time consuming. So uh, uh, it could help to, uh, to simplify it and probably also that it will always be done by two people. So what is your opinion, Marine? Um, yes, um, I understand that it's... Um that simplification is needed, but we, we have had difficulties finding the right balance between simplification and possibility of misunderstandings. That's the difficulty of making a compromise, uh, but I'm sure that um, it, could be, it could be improved uh, based on your, on your recommendation. And concerning your other suggestion, with, which was to um, ask two different compilers to perform the assessment, yes, I think it's a, it's a super idea. It's, a, it's more or less the round robin, uh, one robin test with only two compilers. But it's true that it will increase the time spent on the evaluation. So it's, it will um, increase the robustness of the, of the evaluation, but it will, also, it will also increase time spent. So we should find a compromise and uh, maybe uh, keep on working on the subject. Mm -hmm. Um, probably you can share how many of the existing food composition tables and databases in Europe have uh, used this uh, system for all the data and published it. Um, in Europe, uh, I think it's uh, less than five. So it's not, um, and some use it in, a, in an adapted way. So it's still rarely used because it's too time consuming. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, then there is a question uh, for Sandra. So, um, it is valuable to uh, develop uh, an ongoing automatic uh, data quality assessment, including assessing beyond the food, uh, um, food composition part. So, would you like to uh, make some uh, comments on that? Yes. I do think it's valuable. Uh, I do think we need to bridge uh, the two fields, you know, at least speaking from the consumption work. Uh, when we receive this data and we are using different manners or mixing tables, uh, I do think uh, it's harder and in practice not done to assess the quality of these, these uh, sources of information. So on an automated um, 
well, not necessarily an automated, but a system that will go beyond uh, the analytical data that I think a bit of as input has been proposing, I think it's already a good step forward. Uh, but also perhaps considering other aspects that will be uh, important for our choices when, because we are usually linking or matching information at the food level uh, using different tables, as I said. So I think assessing more uh, this step would help us to provide more quality of the data. Because in practice, uh, a lot of mixing of information is happening. I know that those who are at the national level doing uh, already trained by Eurofear or many other uh, frameworks have a good knowledge on that. But a lot of assessments uh, across the world, and I can speak for Brazil, uh, are hampered by the lack of understanding of these, uh, of how this data is prepared, or what do I do with this data that was told to me that it was of good quality, but now I'm mixing with other tables that is of not good quality. Uh, so I think there is a gap there that needs to be filled that somehow. Not sure for by uh, if it by food composition, uh, by the food composition field, but certainly communicating with the food composition field. Yeah. So meaning that we need uh, in the future probably much more collaboration between the dietary assessment and uh, the food composition uh, experts to come up with some. Uh, some ideas on how to uh, to evaluate, mm -hmm. like we, you said, you know, we did in the uh, in the evaluation framework that we proposed for published food composition data and analysis uh, and, and databases mm -hmm. to see how what where are the important steps. And uh, you mentioned some uh, of the food matching. And uh, this was also uh, we have had a very nice seminar. Um, uh, last week, uh, mm -hmm. uh, not last week, on the 30th of uh, March on food matching, because food matching is really a highly important step. And I think in the quality assessment of the uh, nutrient uh, uh, intakes, it's not that, um, that well considered. And I think mm -hmm. uh, there are other steps which we need to consider. So for the moment, we have some guidelines uh, which are separated and uh, and separated people are looking at the set at the, at the things differently so mm -hmm. probably this is one of the things that would be needed to be done in the future having said so uh, Sandra you have some more uh, questions so uh, Dr. Sandra about uh, the name displayed for food which includes the preparation of food uh, should it also consider the yield factor and or the retention factor used to calculate the uh, nutrient items? Thank you. So it, the question is not only that uh, you do uh, a, a good matching on the food level, but you check that the data which is behind is also of uh, a good quality. This is, I think, uh, what uh, the, uh, the person would like to ask. Yeah, if I understood correctly, uh... I guess um, defining this or identifying this need for uh, including these factors depends of what kind of information you are linking or you are looking uh, to use. Usually you want to look into those uh, aspects because you need to consider the amounts that will be linked and uh, how was reported in your survey. And uh, retention factors are important. But uh, I think it all depends how the data are presented in the table. If that has already been considered uh, in the food composition part, you don't need to do uh, that again in the consumption part. Or, I mean, depending on how you are reporting your data, and that varies so much from system to system. The, the dietary assessment should be able to handle that, and the food composition data should already be should have, should have already taken that into account when reporting information on 100 grams per consumed food, for instance. Uh, but we usually find useful that food composition tables uh, provide that information because it may be used uh, for further calculations. Mm -hmm. you know, all, not all food composition tables are presenting those values. Yeah. So if I understand uh, correctly, you wanted to say that uh, you, uh, you would choose a food composition table who has uh, demonstrated that they are uh, applying the yield and 
uh, nutrient retention factors correctly um, compared to a food composition table who did not uh, demonstrate that or he, which did yeah. not use that. Exactly. Yeah. So then we have another question. Uh, very often when aiming for exact match for food uh, matching, researchers need uh, to do new recipe calculations. The additional challenge is the lack of good databases of yield factors and retention factors for reliable recipe calculation. So how do we check for quality in recipe calculation? And this is probably a question for everybody of us. So uh, probably uh, Kuntit and Prabasi, would you like to, uh, to start um, um, You're still mute. No, you don't want. Most of our data is from analyzed data. We haven't borrowed from anyone, so we have no experience on food matching. Yes. So what the Kunchit, uh, what Kunchit, what Papasi is just saying is that uh, there are some tables who are just analyzing the data. They are not calculating. So most of uh, the, the values that you will find in these tables, they are only analyzed. Therefore, this would not be applicable. Other tables uh, are much more um, um, adding some uh, calculated values like uh, for cooked foods or for recipes. So Marine, what would you say on, on this issue? Well, in the French food composition tab uh, table, uh, the number of data obtained from recipe uh, uh, calculation is very, very low. Uh, I think we have less than maybe 20 foods. But what I would say concerning recipe calculation is that, yes, we know that we need factors for, um, I mean, yield factor and nutrient retention factors. But I suppose we should also pay attention to the way the recipe was made. I, I mean, uh, sometimes um, we have, um, uh, we know that uh, someone has um, has consumed a food that is a recipe, but we do not have the associated recipe. So we have to search for a representative recipe to match with the with the name of the recipe we have, because we have some uh, only the name of the recipe. And I think. Um, um, maybe regarding the number of source considered, <clears throat> uh, regarding the type of source considered uh, for obtaining list of ingredients and uh, cooking methods, um, there's something to, well, uh, to quality assess also in this um, in these domains, not only in calculation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. And I would like to add that, uh, for example, in the uh, West African food, com food composition table that was uh, published uh, last year, we uh, all the recipes uh, which are used in the um, in the food composition table, they are with the ingredients. They are all published there uh, with the ingredients, with the amount, with the yield factors. And we have a whole list of more than 400 uh, uh, foods with their uh, yield factors. And we also publish the uh, retention factors which was used. So, and this is some of the things that uh, we would like to see in every published food composition table because it helps a lot to understand the quality of the food composition table and, uh, and gives more information to the users of uh, which yield factor was used, if it is appropriate for them, uh, which retention factors, which ingredients of each recipe. And I think uh, that would be helpful and probably really in the future, we should think about uh, a, uh, a nice database for uh, yield factors, uh, which would be available all for, for everybody. Uh, we already have some, which is from Bogner and from Lena Bergström but uh, it is not very accessible. So uh, probably this is one of the things uh, some people can think about that one in the future. And I guess it would be really extremely important to have that. 
Um, but uh, again, you know, look at uh, the uh, food composition tables that you want to use and see if this is part of uh, the documentation that they are publishing. And this is also part of the things in the evaluation framework proposed by uh, FAO and INFOODS that this is always be given. So this is one of the important aspects of the documentation and it should really be there. Sandra, you have the floor. Yeah, I just would like to stress, I have said that in my presentation, but how important for a user is to have access to that information to be able to do new recipe calculations that are always needed. We cannot um, assume that all recipes are going to be there for your use. And if you think about modes of preparation, different modes of preparation that will happen so often and we need that we need to change one ingredient and you are limited to, to that information if you, there is no transparency about how, how it was done. And once this is displayed, the factors and even the way which recipe method was chosen to calculate those recipes, uh, it will help us to have complete assessments with new recipes that are always needed. And just to reflect a bit uh, uh, on the Caribbean example we are having now with Brut, we have noticed that a lot, uh, the need for an evaluation system for recipes, quality control. Uh, Ruth has some ideas on checking uh, water content of recipes that always a problem. Uh, there is room there for improvements. Uh, it's a room for improvements from both sides, composition and consumption fuels. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, there is another question. Is there a data quality evaluation guideline system for food data taken from scientific publications or journals? So the answer very short is uh, yes. Uh, you can use the Orofir standard. Uh, then there is another question for Orofir data quality assessment. At what range of total quality index should a paper meet for it to be included in the food composition data in case if the value is below 33, because you say the uh, quality ends at 33. Um, the question is uh, on the limit um, that allow access to, um, to, uh, to, to, pu to publication. Well, in fact, we can also define other limits. I, uh, other limits. I mean, um, there could also be a limit for inclusion within a data bank. So um, we can, <coughs> we we have not yet um, decided. Uh, um, we have not yet made a, dec a decision on what uh, on what is what the limit should be for inclusion in a scientific paper because we think um, it's up to the reviewer also to to make an assessment. Uh, what I would say is that um, the list of um, criteria we have in the UFIA quality system is a checklist. Then depending on the use you want to make. Uh, on the specificity of the data, suppose you have totally new data on a food that was never analyzed, maybe it, ha it can have a bad score on a category, but the data can still have an interest if you do not have better data. So we haven't uh, decided about a limit, and I think it's not up to Europea to read to decide. Uh, that and it's the same for inclusion in a in a national database. If you have nothing better than what you have collected, in some cases, uh, you may still want to use this data because um, suppose you do <coughs> not have any data. People who are uh, doing um, uh, assessment studies, they still need a value. And, they, uh, and you will have to produce a value. So um, maybe it's better to use what you have instead of, um, well, letting users alone and using maybe a zero or the, the, or the mean or the median of the, these nutrients in this food category. So I would say that defining limits, um, well, first is, it's difficult and maybe it's not always appropriate. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that is the eternal difficulty. So we aim for the highest uh, quality, 
and sometimes we are obliged to include data of less quality and therefore it is so nice that if we would have the possibility to indicate that this is a data point that is included for because there is nothing better available uh, yeah because we need to make progress but we also need to make progress in the highest possible um, uh, quality um we are almost there and there is um um there are some comments and a lot of comments they say you know really thank you so much very uh, informative uh, i truly enjoyed very refreshing so uh, a lot of people really enjoy um the uh, the presentation that uh, we have seen today and um one person says yes Please, I did not see the uh, the link to Gamma yet. So if um, you can uh, do that before we uh, we close. Um, so again, you know, really thank you to all the presenters for the really excellent uh, presentations, and uh, to the audience for staying with us for such a long time. We have had uh, 111. Uh, uh, person joining us in uh, in this webinar so uh, thank you so much for for all of you and i hope that you found it uh, interesting and quality of data is really always important so uh, this is why this seminar is really uh, very important and i would like to ask everybody to uh, to have some last uh, comments before we close Kunchit and Papasi, would you like to start? Okay. I think that we, we can learn from the webinar that I think the quality of the system is really important part for the good quality database for the user. So it means we need to emphasize on the quality in all the steps of the making the, the food condition database. Papasi, you would like to add something? Uh, if you want to have a good quality food composition database, just study the criteria for evaluation and follow that. Uh, study the, the highest marks, the highest marks for the evaluation. So follow that so you will get a good mark and become like a, a reliable, food, a good quality food composition database. Yes. Marine. Well, I think um, the way to quality is a long way. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it's a time consuming way, but um, as, um, as shown by Ruth um, in her presentation, it's the basis of very important conclusions. conclusions. So um, I would like to motivate you to invest um, in this topic uh, for uh, for the benefits of the results uh, that will be uh, produced based on the food composition values. Sandra. I completely agree with Marine. Uh, quality, um, it's a long way to, to good quality data. Um, I invite you, I invite everyone to actually look into that from the beginning to the end of the assessments, uh, especially those who are going to use the data um, afterwards uh, so for digital assessment or any other purposes, there are more things to be looking look into it. Uh, and we are not always doing, but we should do it. And let's make use of these evaluation systems because I think they are a great uh, start of understanding what we are uh, receiving, what we are uh, getting uh, yeah, in terms of quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you so much. And I can see that uh, we have now uh, the Gamma uh, web link on, in the chat. So uh, those who want to use it uh, can uh, download it from, uh, from the chat. And uh, I would also like to say that uh, quality of data is important. So if everybody who is working on some part of anything is really making uh, sure that their part 
is of highest quality. And if everybody would do the same, so I think we would really move towards uh, the direction where we want things to be done. So that every part of a dietary assessment, every part of a food composition table, starting from uh, the sampling, the, the generation of the food, the, uh, the compilation and the presentation um, and the publishing, uh, I think we would really make a lot of, uh, of progress. And uh, there is also a question where the evaluation framework uh, will be um, downloadable. So it will be soon available on the inputs website. So I think it will take uh, another two or three months and it will be available on the inputs website. So you will find it there and it will be like everything else that we do in, uh, in FAO inputs, it will be free of charge. And uh, having said so, I would really like again to thank uh, all the presenters and also to thank uh, Sol uh, for her assistance and uh, for all your great questions and, uh, and comments. And uh, I really hope that in the future, everybody will contribute to a higher quality and uh, that we will, and I'm looking forward to that one. So thank you so much. And with this one, I would like to, um, to close uh, our very interesting webinar. And uh, again, thanking everybody for contributing.